How does one determine the quality of a film? Is it based on the performances, the story, the, the sound, the production? All the elements and flavors a critic would generally look to when determining whether or not a movie is in fact good. Or we could take a different approach according to some of the experts in the comments I've had over the years and say that a film's quality, a film's value is deemed by the box office revenue. This was recently brought up in the comments for my Space Jam 2 review where I where I wasn't a big fan of the movie to say the least. Could you imagine going to bat for Space Jam 2? Could you even imagine such a thing? Usually when nonsensical statements like that are made, it's because people have their backs against the wall. They can't rely on genuinely good arguments as to why, you know, someone like me is in the wrong about my thoughts on a film. So they have to immediately go to preposterous lengths or they'll just attack the person themselves which one of the people I'm referring to I won't I won't say it doesn't matter um there's been many over the years but one of them started out in one direction and when I kind of disproved that idea then they went to the personal attacks you know then they went to the trying to discredit the critic uh, because their initial basis didn't play out how they wanted it to. Anybody with even, I think, a, a, a top level understanding of how to debate would, would know that the argument of a movie is good based on the box office, I, I, I shit, how, how do you not understand how completely stupid that is? In fact, I'll, I'll help discredit you right now. I have, in fact, with me a phone. Um, most people have them. They're, they're not... I mean, they're relatively new, I guess, in, in terms of the mobile space. Let's go through the top 20 in the box office earners. These are films that are probably making a billion dollars, right? Um, in number one, we have Avatar uh, grossing, I mean, we're just shy of $3 billion. That's insanity. That's crazy. I like Avatar, actually. I know a lot of people don't, but, you know, it's the number one movie in the world, so... Therefore, it must be the number one movie ever created, right? That's the value we've 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 put upon these types of things. We have Avengers Endgame, fine, a, a good film. Titanic, a good film. None of these, I would say, are even in the top 50, uh, you know, movies of all time list. But again, they've made so much money that they must be, according to the uh, few people that have said this. Now let's just kind of glance, oh, Star Wars uh, A Force Awakens, The Force Awakens. I know a lot of people don't like that film and they're wrong because it made a lot of money. So therefore it's good. This is fun. At number nine, we have Furious 7. Fast and the Furious 7. It's at the nine spot of top grossing films of all time. Star Wars The Last Jedi. The Last Jedi is deemed one of the greatest films of all time because it made 1,332,698,830 dollars. Are you shitting me with this? I can't even pretend to defend this garbage trash hole of a movie. And you're going to have the audacity to go in the comments and say it's great because people saw it in theaters because people paid money? Newsflash, dipshit! People buy crappy things all the time, especially if that crappy thing is attached to a very prominent, important franchise that's that's been around for eons. That's aggressive, not eons, but it's been around for a long time. It's been around for a long time. And it was coming off the heels of A Force Awakens. And while, yes, that is a, a very kind of, you know, 2.0 version of A New Hope, doesn't really do a lot of new things, it still got people back into Star Wars. It had fun. It had the flavors we come to expect. So to arrogantly say The Last Jedi is a good movie because it made money, I can't begin to tell you how stupid you are for such a statement. Let's continue. Fuck my ass. We have Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom right after it. That movie is absolute shit. You have maybe, I'll give you a half hour, okay? I will give you a half hour of fun in Fallen Kingdom, but after that, it goes so off the rails stupid, there's no possible way for me to justify it. I, I don't know how anybody could like this film outside of dinosaurs. And for some, that's just what it is. You have dinosaurs, I'm gonna like it sort of mentality. Just eking out in the top 20 is another Fast and the Furious movie. Dear gods, the fate of the Furious. 
the fate of the Furious. Gee, no wonder. Fast of the Furious 7 is where Paul Walker died in real life. So people went out to see it, even if they didn't care about the Fast and the Furious franchise. Fate of the Furious is right off of that. It's kind of like the last Jedi thing, right? Shit. Oh. Iron Man 3 is at 20. Right below Iron Man 3 is Minions. Minions. 21. Masterpiece. Cinematic equivalent of gold. A treasure. A Picasso painting in motion. Minions. Let me just list a couple off for you. Captain Marvel. That's in, that's at 26. Captain Marvel. Definitely, people definitely saw that because of the pedigree of the film and not because it was wedged between two of the m most massive Avengers movies ever. Right behind that is Transformers Dark of the Moon. Listen to the title. Dark of the Moon. Holy shit. Oh my god. And then we have at 30, The Lion King. Now this is confusing because if I scroll up a ways. Oh, uh, quite a ways actually. At number six, we also have The Lion King. So one of these is that ugly abortion that came out just a couple years back. That basically shot for shot remade it, but in this CG live action sort of a way. With no charm or personality. And even the visuals I thought were just miserable because they were it's like quasi lifelike but had no life to them. Yeah, yeah, that 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 made the top. That made the top 30 list. You better believe it, Buster. And you know what's disgusting about this? I'm pretty sure the number six Lion King is the awful one. It's not the animated classic. It's the gross cash grab remake. Freaking people. I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. Now these aren't in the top 30 box office, but imagine going to bat for the Twilight series. Those movies all made bank. Lots of money made there. How about Fifty Shades of Grey? How about Fifty Shades of Go Fuck Yourself? I already talked about Dark of the Moon being on the list, but guess what? Most of those Transformers movies made a buttload of money. Apparently they're good. Your argument is shit. So I think I've established that this is a bad argument to make and that you shouldn't make it and you should feel bad if you ever say it. Hey, it made a lot of money. That means it's good. Well, you know what? McDonald's makes a shit ton of money. I don't think that's good. And I eat there all the time because it's convenient. Because it's, it's just a quick in and out experience for, from both an eating standpoint and a bathroom standpoint. You have probably dealt with something similar, maybe not even online, but in person where you say a movie's not good, and then the person argues back with, uh, okay, tell that to the, you know, 70 million it grossed opening weekend. Clearly, people are liking it because they're going to it, and clearly that makes it good. When you discredit them by giving them some of the stats I just threw out, like, um, the Lion King remake was a cinematic darling, or the Fast and the Furious movies are in the top 15. When you discredit them, and they inevitably come back with, your opinion's crap, or you know what, you're just arrogant, and you think your your opinion's better than everyone else, then, then you know you've truly won the argument. Because that's where it inevitably always ends up for me, when I even attempt to combat these trolls online. They come back with, I can't stand sick, arrogant people like you who think your opinions are better than everyone else's. I never once said that! But yeah, I do hold my opinion in high regard because I value my own thoughts much like I think you would value yours. So if you had a web show or if you were doing a like a blog or, or an, a, an article or reviewing movies just for fun on like Letterbox, I would think you would you would be very high on your own opinion. Not necessarily better than anyone else's, just something you can stand by. I've said many times over the years that if you like a movie, good for you. Even if it's a movie I hate, good for you. What, why, why do I give a shit at the end of the day if you like something I don't? What I care about is you presenting some concrete reasoning behind it other than it made money or other than you suck. Give me reasons why it's good and I'll stand by you. You know, that's easy enough. That, that's, that's, that's more than fair, I think. So the whole point of this rant is just to let you know you're not alone, friend. Take solace that, in fact, there's others like you out there that are being hit with the box office comment, that are being hit with the 
your arrogant or your stupid sort of retort when you inevitably um, push back against their claims. And I really want you to relish in the understanding that you have won the argument when it gets down to it. And winning arguments is really all that matters at the end of the day. It's really all that there is. <laughs> There's no message here. Thanks for watching. Hope you like the rant. There's plenty more on this channel about movies. If you want to hear me talk about non-movie related things that have absolutely no bearing on real life issues, head on over to Adam Olinger on YouTube. I talk about not getting a straw in the drive-thru. I talk about getting dry banana bread. I talk about how much it sucks to get the stomach flu. Things like that, you know, just, just light stuff. Nothing, nothing serious that's gonna upset you, I hope. If it does, you're probably that same guy in the comments of some of these videos that says the box office is the best way to judge the quality of a film. Don't subscribe if that's the case. Take care.